Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video let's change the thermal pads on the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3090 OC edition. Before going to tear down the GPU, let's check the actual temps through some benchmarks. So as we can see the actual thermal pads are doing a pretty good job maintaining low temps without going crazy with the GPU fan cures. Usually during my tests, I don't touch the fan cures because I believe that measure the performances in a stock situation is the best way to go. Let's check if the new thermal pads will do any better. Moving to the thermal pads that I'm using, I want to spend a few words in case this can be helpful for you guys on which one to use. Whatever thermal pads you are choosing, you should pay attention to these three things. The thickness, the thermal conductivity, which is measured in watts per meter Kelvin. In my case, the Jelly Solution Extreme has a thermal conductivity of 15 watt watts per meter Kelvin, which I think is okay. You shouldn't go below uh, 8 watts per meter Kelvin, especially considering how much hot the GDDR6X memories can be. And the next thing is the density, which in my opinion shouldn't be below 2 grams per cubic centimeter. The last and the most important thing that can influence also the final results and the overall temperature is the short or the hardness. As we can see in this picture, there are different ways to measure it. In the thermal pads, I use the double O unit. So the higher the number, less soft the pads will be. As you can imagine, this is going to influence in the first place the thickness. So let's say we need exactly something about 2 millimeters, but the shore is extremely soft or is too hard. In this case, we might have issues reassembling back the GPU. The pads I'm using here have a shore between 60 and 70, so they aren't that soft, but neither too hard. Referring to the shore scale, they should be okay for the memory modules. For preventing issues, I will try to measure with a digital caliper the thickness of the actual thermal pads. If I'm lucky, some corners of the pads might be safe and not squishy. I'm aware that this is in the most accurate way because I don't know if the existing pads are the same shore or density. But this can somehow be helpful just to have an idea of the thickness. Alright guys, before going ahead with the teardown, I wanted to say that this video isn't sponsored by anyone. So I would appreciate if you hit that like button in case you like this content subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. It doesn't cost anything to you, but it will help grow the channel and allow me to bring more content like this. Thank you so much. With that said, let's start with the teardown of the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 1390 OC edition. Okay, first of all, uh, let me have a work through on the tools that I'm using here. I'm using some tweezers, uh, they're always useful. This is the TR6. As we see, we're gonna use it this on these screws here. I will show you that in a minute. Then here we have the Philips Zero and the Philips One. We have some cleaning wipes from Noctua. These are cleaning wipes for cleaning the thermal paste from the core because we are going to repaste also the core. I have seen videos of guys who they just, just change the thermal pads and they don't repaste the core, which is a big issue in my opinion. Okay, I'm using gloves here, but this is my choice. You can you cannot use them if you prefer as you wish. And okay, here we have the thermal pads from one millimeter, 1.5 and 2.5. And in my case, I'm using a digital caliper to measure the thickness of the thermal pads and this thing also for cleaning. And that's it. Okay, guys, let's start with the teardown. The first thing I'm going to remove is this piece of plastic here, which is uh, basically an aesthetic piece. I have to say it even disturbs when you connect the power cable here. As we can see, it's just an aesthetic piece. Here I'm going to use the Philips Zero on these two screws here. The next piece we're going to remove is this one. And here we need the Philips One for removing all these screws here. I'm going to remove this piece of plastic here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight screws here. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we have to remove the heatsink from the back plate and from the PCB. For doing that, we will start removing some of these screws here. So as we can see guys here we have the warranty ceiling so if you remove this uh, you are going to lose eventually the warranty depending on which in which place you are living even if i believe that this is something really stupid because if you open just to change the thermal pads then it shouldn't be any issue but okay this is my opinion just for you guys to know that if you remove this little piece this white piece here let me show you this one Alush is going to know that you open the gpu and probably are going to have issues with the warranty so let's start removing all the screws here Let's start with the TR6 that are these four screws here. One, two, three, four. After that, I'm gonna remove these screws here. One, four, and five. I believe that removing these screws here 
it's going to be more easy than removing the other screws which are the main screws uh, between the PCB and the heat sink and the back, back plate in this case. So for this I'm going to use the Philips Zero, uh, really small screws. Once we are done here let's remove these two here which I'm going to use the Philips One here. And at the end let's remove these four screws. Okay guys now we remove all the screws and we can remove the PCB from the heat sink doing that gently. Before removing the PCB from the heatsink, remember guys to remove this cable here, which is the cable for the, for the fans. This is here. It's a little bit complicated, but nothing impossible. Here we go. And there is another cable here, as we can see, this one. Alright, here we remove the PCB from the heatsink. Pay attention here, because we have this little black cable here that, that we have to remove here. Alright, first thing first, I'm gonna clean all this and try to measure this thermal pad here to see if we have some corners, as I might see, which are not squished probably. And trying to see if we have some safe corners to measure with a caliber. This corner here seems to be safe. I'm gonna take it out and measure it. It's 2.2. I've seen other thermal pads and I have to say this, in this one ASUS seems to have been using a good one. Okay, I'm not going to measure the memory modules because I know for sure that there are 2 millimeter pads there. I don't know if we have, probably this corner here is safe. I'm gonna try to measure it. Yes, it's 2.0 millimeters. So for the memory modules we are sure that we have 2.0 millimeters. Let me remove the other one. The quality of this thermal pad seems to be okay to me. They probably are not the most cheapest one, but anyway. All right, we're done, let's clean up. I believe they have, they have been using a good thermal pads because, um, let me show you one thing, guys. Whenever you remove the thermal pads from here, usually they, the cheapest one, they usually they leave a grease here, there's kind of oil, so it's a mess to clean up. But as we can see, this doesn't have that kind of oil, so even if it's um, easy to clean, really easy and fast to clean. I didn't expect they they used a good thermal one. Okay now that all is good and clean let me remove the back plate and do the same thing on the memory models on the back plate. Okay also here I believe they have been using a good thermal part because as we can see there are, there is not a lot of grease and oil so I'm surprised I didn't expect this good material to be used. Usually the manufacturer they don't care they just use the most cheapest one but in this case fortunately they have been using a good one all right seems all good i will clean with the wipes in a moment and let's go check the pads here and these are the same pads so these are going to be two millimeters i believe now let's try to measure this one all right this corner seems to me to be safe so this is 2.2 .2, so they probably have been using a pad of 2.5 and then we have these small pads here that I believe they are 0 0.5. Yes, they are 0 0.5. As we can see, they are extremely small, so are 0 0.5. Okay, now I'm going to cut the thermal pads. Here is one nice thing on how you can easily apply the thermal pads here. We have all the, sh as we can see here, we have all the shapes here. I don't know if you guys can see that. These corners here and also here. We have the exact measure on how to cut it and where to cut the thermal pads. So you don't have to go crazy and measure how long the thermal pads are going to be on where. They have all these shapes here and the same shapes on the back plate too. So it's going to be really easy on cutting the thermal pads. Alright guys, we got everything in place and I'm going to install it back. So just recapping quickly, here I've been using the Gelit Ultimate 2.0 mm in the memory modules. Here 1.5 mm, here the 1 mm. This is the back plate. Here we have 2.5 mm in these two uh, stripes here. Here the 2 mm again and this is the 0 0.5 mm. I'm going to reassemble it back and let's check how the temperature is going to be. Hopefully they are going to be a little bit better. And please reapply the thermal paste on the GPU core because I have seen a lot of people that they don't reapply the thermal paste, which is a big mistake to me. As we can see, all the temps are going down from minus 8 to minus 10, which I consider being a pretty good result. Allowing so the GPU core temp below 70 degrees and the memory temps below 90 degrees. 
It took me about 30 minutes replacing the thermal pads on the Asus ROG Strix 1390 OC edition. The pads used here are the Gelit Ultimate and the Extreme, as per following. On the PCB, on the memory modules, the Gelit Ultimate 2.0 mm. For the VRMs, the right line if you are front facing the PCB, I've used the Gelit Extreme 2.5 mm. For the MOSFETs, next to the mentioned VRMs, I have been using the Gelit Ultimate 1.5 mm. And for the MOSFETs on the other side, the Gelit Ultimate 1 mm. For the backplate, I've used on the memory modules the Gelit Ultimate 2.0 mm. For the backside of the VRMs, the Gelit Ultimate 0.5 mm, the smallest one, and the Gelit Extreme 2.5 mm for the backside on the power stages. So, as a total, you will need one package of Gelit Ultimate 0.5 mm, one package of Gelit Ultimate 1.5 mm, two packages of Gelit Ultimate 2.0 mm, and one package of Gelit Extreme 2.5 mm. You can find the links for all these pads in the description. They cost me less than $50, which I can agree with you that is a little bit expensive for simply some thermal pads. But if you are struggling with high temps and you want your GPU to last, I suggest you guys change them once in a year. Let me know down below in the comments if you have replaced the thermal pads on your GPU or if you are planning to do so. That's all for this video. If you enjoy watching it and if you find it helpful, please leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. Thanks for watching.